I don't know why I keep doing this to myself, but I keep deleting the video I just filmed, meaning I have to refilm it again. And I filmed this video so long ago, and it was such a good run. So to do it all over again, thank God I still have the notes on my phone. Good thing I'm smart about that. But I'm so annoyed right now. But I need to review this book because the third book's coming out because there's gonna be a fourth book. I don't know if there's gonna be more after that. I can't just not have the first book reviewed. So yeah, I there will be an outfit change. review, I'm going to be reviewing Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I love this book because I could not put it down. I was reading Air of Fire while I was reading this book and I kept inching towards Red Queen instead of Air of Fire because I was going through some difficulties with that one and nothing in this book bored me. I was so entertained throughout the whole entire thing. The writing is amazing. There are so many scenes where it got my heart racing so fast and also there are a lot of scenes that made me feel a lot of emotions. So I I'm super happy about this read that in that I finally started reading it. So on Goodreads, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And for a letter grade, I'll give it an A. So for all of you who do not know what Red Queen is about, basically it's set in like a futuristic USA where there's like a nuclear explosion, I believe. And it takes place in this certain area where it's like Boston, but it's mainly like New Yorkish and like up there, that area by the lakes and such. And this place is called Norta. It's run by a monarchy and there are different houses for the nobility and the nobility are silvers so in this world there are red and silvers red have red blood silvers have silver blood and the silvers have powers such as fire and water and metal so in this book we follow this character named Mare I believe and she is a red and reds are treated horribly they're basically like the slaves to the silvers but she has a power and her power is freaking amazing so basically it's about what kind of happens to her once her powers show up one day and how the kingdom and how the society deals with her. So that's all I have for the non-spoilery section and let's move into the spoilery section. Okay, so I did not know that I was pretty much going to hate all the silvers in this book besides Cal, of course, and besides Julian and besides Lucas, which I'm so mad that he died. Like, why? I thought he would live longer. He deserves to live it until like the second book. Come on. <laughs> and... Evangeline, Evangeline. I totally pictured her in my head, this Russian figure skater, and I think it's because their names are super similar, and I just imagined Evangeline with like darker brown hair, and also scares me when I watch her skate. So that's why I pictured her like that. Mayor? She has the powers, but I love that not only can she manipulate it, but she can create it. And that's why she's stronger than both a red and a silver. Although, I don't feel like I really felt that besides the fact that she can create lightning. I just don't feel like we've seen enough for her to be better than both. But I bet we'll get to see that in the second book. Oh my god, the dual thingies in class when she went up against Evangeline. Oh my god, I was so excited for that. Chapter 4 was just the other student and then the chapter after was her and Evangeline. But during the chapter before, I was like, oh my god, I need them to fight. I need her to go against her. So the chapter before, I was just reading so fast because I just, I just had to read to the part. And I got my heart racing so fast. And then when we finally got to the part where she could fight Evangeline, I loved this scene so much. The action, the writing was so detailed. I just remember that my heart was racing so fast and I was reading this at a mall. So I was kind of freaking out in the middle of a store. But that's okay. <laughs> Another example of how much I love the writing was when Maven gave like the five names to the Scarlet Guard to kill and we are reading this scene where she's greeting all these people and the five people that Maven gave names to and she's like oh my god I'm shaking your hand and right now you're alive but in like 10 minutes you're gonna be dead it's gonna be because of me and I don't know if I can take that but it's for the greater good and I know I know I know but like I just can't the writing really puts you in her shoes you feel the same things that she's feeling you're feeling the guilt that she's having and it was very impactful it's really nicely written so as much as I understand where the Scarlet Guard are coming from, I feel like the way they go about it is kind of bad. <laughs> I mean, they're literally like terrorists. Like the way, like you don't, you don't kill, you don't bomb places. There are other ways 
You can make a speech. You can try civil disobedience. I mean, come on, people. You don't have to bomb a place. You don't gotta assassinate five people. Uh, so it was just kind of iffy on them, but I, I hope I learned to love them. I think that's what the fandom is called, the Scarlet Guard, so... Hopefully it gets better for me in the second book. So I totally saw Maven's betrayal coming throughout the whole entire book. And I think it's because I had prior knowledge to the fact that people liked Cal a little more. I was totally about to say Kale. Can't read two books at the same time. Because of that, I just kind of knew that Maven was going to somehow be booted out of the story. But I didn't expect it to be this way, but I did expect him to somehow not be the one. I thought I was gonna pity him in the end, but no, I end up hating him. And then I was, and then with the whole thing, like anyone can betray anyone, which I love that saying. And also, Maven is his mother's son. Just with those sayings constantly being repeated throughout the book, I just had a feeling, and my feeling was right. Even though I did predict it, I totally loved the scene when it actually happened. Like, I was not bored. I was not like, oh, this is like a predictable book. I really loved how it was written. And I also saw that her brother was still alive. I totally saw that coming, and his powers are cool. I always found that power most helpful, especially if you're in a really bad situation, you can just teleport yourself back home. I'm also glad, so glad, because I had this problem with the Throne of Glass series, that in this love triangle, just because she and Maven stopped being together, she and Cal are not together. And for good reason. They both betrayed each other. They have no reason to be together, and the only reason they are friends is because they both want to kill Maven. She is her own independent self. She needs to be herself for a while. She has her brother now. I really like that. I'm glad we didn't just hop right into Cal even though I ship them and I hope they eventually get together but right now I like that they are not. Again my favorite scene was the duel and also the ending when she and Cal were fighting off the people that Maven sent. So yeah that's all I have to say for this review. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, afternoon, wherever you are. Bye! Today I'm going to be doing my average August book haul plus wrap up plus TBR. I am going to do book outlook first because this happened. I'm going to be doing the 8th episode of Mystery Unboxing. Let's unbox it. I have like a whole story about how I couldn't find it. But... Oh my god, they're so thin. I don't know if I, oh my god, I just got chills. And today I'm redoing a review on I Don't Have the Book. <laughs>